Ahoy hoy and welcome to the channel. I'm Dr. Sumerian, not a real doctor, and today we are going to go over memes from the r slash dank memes from site 19 subreddit. Let's get started. Ten Tanhoni writes a complex narrative about a scenario where the SCP Foundation turns on humanity after discovering something about humanity as a whole. Dr. Sumerian, hop in, we're gonna find out who asked. Actually, I feel like this is inaccurate. It's not that no one asks. People do ask, legitimately, uh, why about that proposal. My problem is that I, I've read it and I was like, I don't really care why the Foundation is doing what it's doing. I don't even know if I... I, I was kind of tepid on that one. It wasn't that I disliked it. I just was eh, never really... I didn't particularly enjoy it. That's, we'll put it that way. Um, but yes, and part of that was that like the driving force, the driving point of the article, which is supposed to be inspiring the reader to be like, what could be so bad about humanity that the SCP Foundation wants to kill everybody? But all I could think was, I mean, the SCP Foundation wants to kill everybody. It's anomalous, so it doesn't really matter why. I don't believe there's a deeper reason. Something weird happened. Something illogical. There is no logical answer to that. So I don't care. Anyway. The latest in-universe revision of the same article, the first in-universe in version of an SCP article. I don't know. Eh. Mm. I get what they're saying. When we're talking about in-universe revisions, not out-of-universe revisions. Um, it is weird... Uh, oftentimes, I mean, I understand from a narrative standpoint why this is done, uh, but I, I do believe it breaks a little bit of the verisimilitude of an SCP article to include the previous uh, containment procedures in there. Now, that said, I'm sure I've done it in an SCP article in the past, so I'm probably being a bit of a hypocrite there. Um, but it, it does just feel like it's not, it doesn't, it breaks verisimilitude a little bit. To be like, here's all of the previous stuff. You have to read all of that before you get through to the to the ending here. I do believe... Now, hold on. I do believe there would be iterative uh, versions of a particular document. Obviously. But the version you read on the page would be simplified down to just the stuff you need to know. And in a lot of them, not all, but in a lot of them, you don't need to know the stuff that came before. It is not relevant. It just builds suspense for the reader to be like, oh my god, it got kept getting worse and worse and worse and worse. What happened? But you don't need to know that. If you're working for the, if you were working for the foundation, you wouldn't need to know all of that. Not every time. There are cases where that's not true. So, I mean, this is very accurate. Uh, people who give the Ouroboros cycle as an introduction to SCP. People who give Series 1 articles as introduction to SCP. Both of these approaches are wrong. Let me just throw that out there. I have nothing against Series 1 SCPs, and I also have very much nothing against the Ouroboros cycle. However, they are two ends of the spectrum. Overly simplistic and very complex. Find your favorite SCP article that includes a narrative doesn't have to be a strong narrative but an underlying narrative attached to the article okay if you introduce somebody that way okay they'll understand both sides of the spectrum better but if you introduce somebody to just series one articles it's really young people series one articles are better for young people because they are incredibly simple that's and there's nothing wrong with that however um, uh, introducing somebody to the SCP wiki with the Ouroboros cycle is going to, more often than not, alienate them from the SCP wiki and be like, ah, oh, little stupid narrative-based SCP. You know, it does the opposite problem. Um, and a lot of people, for a lot of people, introducing them to Series 1 stuff is going to also do that. So I feel like, and I, I, I don't want to, I'm not going to promote my own stuff, but there's a lot of SCPs of my own that I feel are very good introductions to the SCP universe. Um, no Fury, I would say, hits that perfect sweet spot of just enough narrative to get... It is a little bit dialogue-heavy, though. Maybe... 
maybe how I got to Memphis is a better option. It was an interview, but it's not very long. It's not expository. There's a, a lot of people enjoy No Fury because for exactly what I said, it's a kind of a light to medium narrative SCP. Uh, where the, there is a focus on the SCP object as well, the narrative that's attached to it. But I have some problems that I don't, I don't, I, don't, I could just fix them. I have some problems with it myself, actually. So, but, and that that's that the, there's an interview in it that's just too long and too much exposition for my tastes. I should go back and fix it, but everybody loves the damn thing. <laughs> Not everybody, but most people I know, uh, and whose opinions I respect, uh, quite enjoy it, so I've just left it alone. Anyway, moving on. Find something in the middle. Don't don't go to the extremes. I know this is a meme, so it's a joke, and this is a very good point. But I, I just find something in the middle. Mother, I have joined the minimalism trend. SCP Foundation. <laughs> I only included this because it looks like the SCP Foundation logo in the last one is a uh, a sucker mouth with teeth, <laughs> and somehow is more uh, it somehow has become somewhat terrifying, which I never really think the SCP is a particularly terrifying logo. But hey, someone has managed to make it look like it's uh, some sort of alien mouth. So good job. SCP Illustrated makes a video about how SCP animation channels are killing the OG SCP channels, everyone else. Now, this is an Avengers level threat. Okay, okay, okay. I made a video a while back that, or a while back, literally, like, I think the last video I did, that was uh, S uh, SCP Illustrated is right. And again, I agree he is mostly right about the effects of it. I'm not 100% sure I'm behind the idea of the uh, us versus them narrative that has been very strongly coming out. I mean, like I'm, and this is the funny part. It's not as bad on my video because I was pretty clear about my, uh, intentions, but on my video, I talked about like how I need to figure out how to fix things going forward. Right. Um, and what I'm going to do about it. And that was my solution is like, I need to adapt or die. Is basically what I'm like. I'm saying um, I need to adapt, or my channel will die. One way or the other. One eventually. Uh, people were still left comments. They were like, "You shouldn't stop complaining. Adapt or die." And I'm like, I feel like that was my whole point. But thanks, I guess. Um, and really, that is my point here. Like, regardless of what I think is or isn't good content or et cetera and so on and so forth, um, if I am presented with a problem, I really only have one solution, and that is to change me and what I'm doing to fit the new paradigm. And if the new paradigm is uh, cheap and easy animation, then we're going to do that. Eventually, I got I got some work to do. D class and MTF personnel thinking about the fact that they both have the narrative objective to get slaughtered before an anomaly is understood by the foundation. Now, I included this because I I'm aware of these two independently, but for some reason, it never occurred to me to think of them together. But it's totally true. Like I knew that that the MTFs were for that purpose, and I knew that the D class were for that purpose. But it never at some point was like, you know, those exi literally exist for the same reason in the narrative. Uh, the D-Class are like kind of a cheap kill, whereas the MTF is a show that like despite training, despite equipment, despite all of the planning necessary, this is still incredibly dangerous and can still get you, right? D-Class, on the other hand, are just like, hey, look at us experimenting. Also, this guy's D-Class outfit is kind of fly, yo. Just saying. Celebrities, when they see the number five, you can make a religion out of this. If you don't know what the fifthest church is, read Star Signs. And if you do know what the fifthest church is, read Star Signs. And if you haven't read Star Signs, read Star Signs. There we go. Line between a tale and an SCP article are really starting to blur, having objects that are basically an entire tale attached to a document with little importance put on the object itself leaves very little to be explored later. Sir, this is a Wendy's. The first guy, I have said this before, not to uh, not to a Wendy's employee, 
maybe I've said it to a Wendy's employee. In fact, almost certainly I've said it to a Wendy's employee, considering, because I've said it on this channel, uh, and considering the numbers, that I, I, well, I mean, not almost certainly, but there's a pretty good chance that at least one Wendy's employee has seen this. So anyway, but I, I completely agree. Um, well, I don't completely agree. I don't think there's a problem with leaving uh, very little to be explored later with an article. However, that is true. I think that uh, expanding too much makes it kind of impossible for you to actually expand later. Uh, I shouldn't say impossible. It makes it difficult. Um, but the, I mean, like, here's the funny thing. Like, the number one SCP that I think of when I think of a tail, basically, but but we wanted an excuse to put it in an SCP slot is uh, Shaggy Dreadlocks proposal. Or is it SD Locks proposal? Either way, that's the Shaggy Dreadlocks proposal. And I, I remember when Day Breaks is, is almost, almost entirely a tail. But people have had plenty of time to expand upon it. Tales don't preclude further exploration of an idea or an SCP. But it does cover a lot of the possibilities. So there's a little bit of give and take here. And I really, really hate, though totally understand, this propensity to turn tales into SCPs. Because, okay, it is born out of the certainty, and the certainty is not incorrect, is born out of the certainty that tales on the SCP wiki will necessarily get less traffic than scps on average there are some very very highly rated tales but all of the top five i believe are all scps and if not there's like one and there's like one in or two in there and then they start to and then there's some differentiation as you get further down but the vast majority of tales get no nothing nobody pays attention to them SCPs, on the other hand, easy to easier to share. You hand it off to somebody and go, hey, look at this number, and they look, and then they've got the thing. Uh, and they don't require, generally, they don't require any previous knowledge, whereas tales can oftentimes require previous knowledge of some kind, either of an other SCP or of the canon that it's built in or just the series that it's uh, part of. You read an SCP, you don't need to know... Anything other than the baseline foundation exists and it contains anomalies. And then you can go from there. I made a mistake. Yes, I saw this. This was a uh, thing about uh, my apology video, which was like a minute and a half long, where I misgendered somebody because I didn't quite understand the rules of how that worked. Uh, or I should say how the exact rules of the exact situation I was dealing with worked. Um, because I felt like that was, you know, to make a minute and a half, you make a mistake, you apologize for it, try and fix it in the future and go forward. Um, but I guess apparent and also funnily enough, uh, they put down that, you know, there's monetization. I hadn't thought of this, but I do, I do now under, I do now recall this being a thing where apology videos are like three hours long. Everybody knows they're going to get clicks. So they put advertisements on it. I had not considered that when I said to myself, you know what, I'm not going to put any ads on this apology, this a minute and a half long apology video, much less one every, it looks like every 15, no, not every 15 minutes, but like every 10 minutes, maybe. Either way, I didn't, I didn't put ads on mine. It's only a minute and a half long. I, I tried not to make it too big of a deal. Um, I don't think I deserve any kind of like, uh, applause for that that feels like the baseline you know thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed the video please hit the subscribe button and then hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when i upload new videos if i'm a little bit down today it's because one i could not sleep last night and two the reason i couldn't sleep last night is because i'm a little down in general over a thing that happened uh, it's not a huge deal, but like I can, I can feel my energy level is a little lower. Uh, and I didn't want you guys to think there was anything seriously wrong. I mean, it's it, it, seriously wrong. It's complicated. It's not a huge deal, but I am a little bit, uh, bummed out. That's all. Thank you very much for watching. 
hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell next to that so you're notified when I upload new videos, and then head on over to patreon.com forward slash D Sumerian and pledge at any level like everybody here on the screen already has, including Dr. J Redacted and Sinjariki, who have both pledged at $100. It's nice to know that I'm not alone out here, and I will see you all again on Thursday.